priesthood dispatches. He's the man. <laughs> it's awesome, funny, random. Doesn't make any sense, but it's good. Welcome everyone back to another episode of Mormon Priesthood Dispatches. Um, John Delin, I was channeling you then in this intro. Um, we are very happy this evening to be joined by Adam and Eve, not their real names. Um, you will notice the bottom of the screen, there's a large A and a blank space. That is because we want to guard the identities of Adam and Eve for their own safety, spiritual and physical, probably with all the desnats um, in that part of the world. But Adam and Eve are a couple who filmed the recent temple endowment ceremony that was posted all over the place and the intellectual reserve have tried so hard to rid the world of. Um, but we thank them and a lot of people thank them. Um, but we're going to dive in tonight. We've got Nemo the Mormon here with us too. Yeah. Uh, Nemo is the people's prince and bringing with him um, <laughs> all the, the wit and banter of a posh Englishman, whereas I am just a, a dustbin man. You know, you need um, to stop calling me the people's prince. People are going to no, start that, taking it seriously. That is going to stick. It's like you are Princess Diana in ex Mormon form. Just as long as I don't go out the same way. Yeah. Well, you're, you're a candle in the wind. <laughs> okay. Adam and Eve, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Doing good. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having us. I will say, though. It may or may not be our real names, depending on what day of the temple we what day we went to the temple. Indeed, very true. Yeah, like if you're um, like Barnabas and Rhoda in real life, then you know you might end up being Adam and Eve after all. <laughs> Barnabas <laughs> and Rhoda. Those are two legit temple names. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> and and there we go. The people's prince knows the lexicon. <laughs> Okay, um, so what we planned this evening is just to to get Adam and Eve in the room, which is great because they are the ex-Mormon witness. Well, I can't even say if they're ex-Mormons or not, because me and Nemo know as much about Adam and Eve as you do. Um, please don't think that we know who, who they are or, or anything. This is We're going on this journey together. Yeah, literally, yeah. we spoke to them for about a minute before this. Um, so they're holding all the cards. Uh, so, yeah, they could be anyone ex-mormon mormon tbm hopefully we'll we'll have a better idea but not any idea who they are by the end of this um because it's important nemo has his name i'm pd they are not our real names because when we first got into i guess the podcasting scene we were both nemo is still involved in church um and i was somewhat involved in church but when it comes to family and friends who are very involved in church and who take these things possibly a lot more seriously, um, we do need to protect ourselves. And there's a lot of crap that gets thrown in this direction. I, I'd imagine if Adam and Eve came out right now um, that you guys might get a lot of stick as well. So that's, that's why it's important to protect that. Um, one other thing, we have to shake the cap. Um, YouTube hates me at the minute because I did some things that Intellectual Reserve didn't like and uh, and others. So please like and subscribe, comment for the algorithm. And if you feel that you could leave a donation, use the link in the description below. But that's enough of that. Looking at my notes, <laughs> the first thing that I've got on my notes is establish the background of Adam and Eve. So without going into a Sunday school lesson, um, we'll ask these questions police style, okay? And you guys answer as much or as little as you want. Were you born into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? I was not. When it comes to location, all we know, guys, is Pacific time zone. That's it. So they could be anywhere from the North Pole to chilly to anywhere alaska north pole is quite chilly <laughs> nice. that's why he's here <laughs> um, so we wanted to establish as well you you're quite young sounding um so would we go from an age range of say 20 to 30 this is a dangerous game to play when you can see people 
Let alone when you can't see. <laughs> Guessing people's ages is never a good game. Ever. <laughs> okay, okay. So I, I guess what we what we really want to know is, um, are you TBMs? Are you attending on a, a Sunday and you just thought, whatever, you know, caution to the wind. Everyone needs to see the awesome actors on the PowerPoint and we're, we're going to nip in and take a quick video. Um, I mean, we are not TBMs, if that was obvious or not. Um, but um, we, we still attend. Not regularly. <laughs> are, are your, and did you use your own recommends? Um, no comment. <laughs> no comment, that's fine. Um, I think it's just, it's an interesting one because um, they've got the new pilot system that they're thinking of bringing out with the telephone recommend mm -hmm. with like the, the photo and, and stuff on it. Um, oh, and I know you. that you scan the, yeah, you scan the barcode and things. Um, but I know as well that some people provide other recommends that can be used. Um, I wish those people would get in touch with me because my state president does not want to provide me with one currently. So <laughs> I feel like perhaps because he's afraid that I'll do something like what Adam and Eve did, which I wouldn't. Um, no judgment, guys, but that's just not my style. So um, he has nothing to fear if you're watching this. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I guess the other question would be, um, did either of you serve missions? I did. I did not. I'll just say I was in Europe. I don't know if I want to get too specific, but uh, I really appreciate um, Europeans and people from the British House too. They're good too. I, I like how he's got his he's got his Brexit knowledge sorted because you know Europeans <laughs> and people from the British Isles. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Were there any other well-known accomplices? involved in the plot i know one in particular new name noah is big on filming in temples i was just wondering if he um helped um he is a big inspiration um but no he, he didn't help um this is our own undertaking yeah okay. awesome um and were you endowed pre-1990 no no <laughs> 2005 the reason i ask is because there were major changes from the 1990 yeah. that we we know about i was endowed just before the 2005 changes where you had to kind mm. of shuffle through the changing room holding your poncho shut um so I was just I wondering was, if you'd... I was in doubt in 2016. <laughs> You're wow. such a young boy. Uh, I don't feel it. And then all of a sudden, we're talking about when we got in doubt. And I'm like, oh, yeah. My, my, mine was like, yeah, seven years ago or something like that. At least, wow. at least your date of birth starts with a 19. Just. <laughs> just. <laughs> just. <laughs> yeah. Now I do remember the millennium. Anyway. Okay. I, I did. Um, I got in doubt after 2005, but uh, um, when I went through, my dad actually told me that I needed to wear only the poncho and with nothing underneath because he uh, didn't know about the changes. Um, and then I went up to do the initiatory and they told me that I needed to put my garments on underneath. So, so you came across like some sort of wild nudist and you're like, no, guys, I don't need to wear them. I don't need to wear them. And they're like, uh, you please wear them. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. The brother in the initiatory was like, oh, what a treat today. Back to the old school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I never like that. You wow. made that guy's day. Yeah. <laughs> when he, it's when he gets his little horn out and, um, you know, the little ram's horn with the oil in it. Yeah, that always, <laughs> always interesting. Okay, so that was all the awkward stuff getting to know you. Uh, I don't think we 
we know anymore, but now we want to understand, I guess, why. How long did you kind of plan um, the the temple plot? We we like plots here. It's like the gunpowder treason and plots. Um, so I don't remember how long it took to plan it. I think we planned it over a few nights and we just kind of practiced at home. Um, just to calm the nerves because we were both so nervous about it. The, the way we did it, um, the device is kind of finicky. Yeah. So... So we wanted to practice seamlessly using said device. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so we practiced at home a little bit. Um, and, um, and then went through and recorded, but I was so nervous that I, like, I just, I felt like, Anyways, I was just super nervous that f when we first went and through and did it, um, and we didn't really like the quality of it. It wasn't everything we wanted. So we went through and did it a second time. And by the second time, I, I was so confident going in because that first time I was super nervous. But by the time we walked out, I realized that no one had noticed. No one even cared. Everyone was just there focused on the screen or focused on their own, fixing their outfits, um, that no one was really watching. They were just looking at the room in general. And so the second time that we did it, I felt perfectly confident. I just knew that. Well, if I can interrupt you, yeah. you, you, you had a fire going the second time. You <laughs> I were was excited to do it. I was excited. I, <laughs> yeah, I felt like, this was my rebellious act and I felt confident going in this time. So, yeah. And who suspects the woman who's like so keen to do a second endowment session on the same day? <laughs> like who, who looks yeah. at that woman and goes, she's up to no good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no one. Everyone's like, she's receiving the spirit. <laughs> yeah. They're just, yeah. They're, honestly, they've all been like, yeah, she's fired up on the spirit. She's feeling it. She's, you know, it's good. Uh-huh. Yeah, meanwhile, you're kind of holding a mental middle finger up to, to everyone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what? I thought after this, what would be amazing is that if they had to put a new message at the beginning of each of the um, endowment sessions now, and that is like an anti-piracy warning. You, you know, wouldn't like you steal a car. You wouldn't <laughs> yeah. steal a handbag. <laughs> Why steal a movie? Why steal a movie? Yeah. But could you imagine oh. people sat there thinking, why do we need a piracy warning? I'd love it down? to be at the end. Um, I'd, I'd love I'd love right at the end, before you go to there, I was like, this service was furnished by Bonneville Distribution. You know, like, <laughs> just get that at the end. Why? Why did you decide to do it? Well, um, I guess it's my turn, huh? Sure. Okay. Um... I think the first thing is, we all know, well, I mean, we all know outs being outside of the church or knowing the truth that it's changed over the years. And um, the promises that you're supposed to make in the temple um, are extreme and unfair. Um, I didn't know what I was getting myself into that day when I walked into the temple. I didn't know I'd have to take off my clothes. Luckily, I got to put them back on. But uh, <laughs> it's it's heavy. And and in reality, when you're sitting there and the endowment, you're experiencing the endowment. Um, you don't really have a have a chance to um, to reason about what's going on to under to to consent to what you're going through um, and to you know, kind of, yeah, I guess just, just reason about it. Like we, we've watched it outside, like, like, you know, through the social media services we found it on and you, you start to notice like, wow, this, they speak incredibly slowly. And, and why did they take out these lines? Um, like for example, um, Satan says, do you have any money? But he doesn't follow up with, uh, 
uh, you could buy anything in this world with money. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the main motivation was people need to know and they need to understand and they need to have it in a setting where they can uh, learn about this and understand this in an accessible way. Because when you're there in the temple, when your friends and your family are watching you, when everybody in the, when the, when the uh, ordinance workers are staring you down from their little uh, stage, you, you don't have the chance to understand what's going on. Yeah, well certainly to process it um, outside of a, like a high pressure environment. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would kind of ask, um, and I think it's awesome that uh, that it was female. Uh, it was filmed from the female side of the room. I think that was awesome. Um, but how did you decide amongst the two of you who would do it? That's, yeah, I don't know. I think it really has to. It really comes down to. Uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe we won't answer that question. Do you, I, I feel must like that's something. I feel like I was really fired up and angry and I felt really, really excited to do it. So you were, you were really passionate about doing it. Yeah. Okay. Nemo, if it's anything like my marriage, um, there's the saying about a woman scorned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, you just don't mess. <laughs> yeah. Also just sorry to, cause maybe you might delete that. Cause it, it was, it was a, it was a bit of a left field question. Um, but a question maybe you, you can answer is, is, is or a statement to your point about how, you know, it changes over the years. Uh, at the beginning of the recording that you've made, it says that the covenants have not changed, which is oh. just untrue. But it's an unprovable claim without records like this. If no one ever recorded the endowment ceremony, then they would be able to make that claim. And hardly anyone's going to find out that it's untrue because they have nothing to compare it to. Well, for those people that haven't seen it, um, there is just this short clip that Nemo was just speaking about um, that I think the brethren kind of maybe, because they've done this before. Was it 2019? They yep, issued 2019. another one of these. Mm -hmm. um, so, and you can Sterling see... Sterling um was convicted, and so they had to change up the videos anyway. Yes. What was he convicted of, Nemo? Um, child sex And who offenses. was he? And he was the director of the films. Okay, so that's, yeah. and, and people who haven't seen it as well will, if you've not been to the temple for a while, you will notice that it's not a movie anymore, um, which was the best thing about it. Because um, the production value was so good. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> hey, it's, it's better than a slideshow, uh, which it is now. Mm -hmm. And why, uh, Adam and Eve, do you have an opinion on why it might be a slideshow? Probably because it's easier to edit and make more changes. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. Uh, well, let's let's see this uh, short clip now for context. Before beginning the endowment session, we share the following statement from the first presidency of the church. Brothers and sisters, since the temple endowment was first administered in this dispensation. Occasional adjustments have been made by the First Presidency and the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, acting unitedly in their capacity as prophets, seers, and revelators. You will notice that additional adjustments have been made in the presentation of the endowment, all of which are in harmony with the doctrine of the Savior's restored gospel. The temple covenants and ordinances remain the same. Lies. May you be blessed as you serve and worship in the house of the Lord today. I just thought that was interesting because they have changed. Mm -hmm. They absolutely have. And one of the biggest changes that we'll get to a little bit later is the whole, who are you actually talking to at the veil? Mm -hmm. Like how can they switch Jesus for Elohim and say it's not changed? They, yeah, the, the entire... <laughs> The entire structure of who you interact with makes a massive difference. It's 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 more than just a change to the covenants. It's a change to the doctrine and theology of the church. Yeah. Who will receive you into the celestial kingdom? That's like a big deal. It's just new to me. I didn't even know that. 
Yeah, yeah. So um, it used to be converse with the Lord at the veil, mm -hmm. and now it's to converse with Elohim at the veil. Yeah. Uh, uh, this this means something to me because I was a temple worker um, for for a while uh, as a missionary, and so um, yeah, I spent a lot of time in endowments, um, and I can yeah, I can recite the veil ceremony in a couple of languages still. Um, yeah. It's you know, it's it's, it's important to me. Uh, these covenants and I took it very 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 seriously um, as I essentially lived in the temple so um, to see it change is upsetting well, in a strange way to me well what they have done is they've given us an experience which you can only read about in the Book of Mormon and that is the experience mm -hmm. of Mahonrad Mariankama the brother of Jared okay. and that is the hand of God just appearing from nowhere and that's this one. Um, <laughs> that is the hand of God. Um, part in the veil. And I, I think he's reaching out for some stones to touch. Um, mm. And all, all he gets is sweaty, sweaty, clammy hands. Uh, <laughs> I mean, given given like the limited, I have to get this out and I'll probably say it again, but given the limited number of viewing positions you can be in, um, like you can't get center aisle uh, to to record this so this is i think it's one of the best temple recordings that i've seen it's so good like the it quality is. is excellent i'm glad you went through for that second time if you're saying it wasn't this good last time because this is honestly it's it's watchable like some of some of new name noah's ones i appreciate the fact that he's done them and i'm not trying to throw shade at new name noah but you know i'll probably get cancelled for saying this um but the quality is not as good mm. obviously so, uh, we're, we're gonna. I'm sure we'll get into a guessing game later of how you did this, and you'll just refuse to confirm any of it. But um, however you did this, it's come out very well. So yeah. thank can you. I, can I just say it's just I've just been grinning like from ear to ear every time you put up the video. It's just it's so exciting seeing it, not just on our computers, but <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> It's well, there's more to come. So, more to come. and the thing yeah. is, it all gets protected under fair use for commentary when it's in this video. So it then is on the internet forever. Yeah, I love that. That's and we've we've not. I guess this this video is more about you rather than like the changes and things. Mm -hmm. But we want to give a flavour to people who've maybe yeah. not seen it, so they can understand mm -hmm. um, what we're dealing with and why we're also traumatized. Um, so kind of just stepping back slightly what what was it that pushed you over the edge was there something that the church specifically did like for me i've had a that some was pushed a little bit further in my activism recently by the sec situation which really kind of boiled my piss kind of pushed me to do maybe some more drastic activism uh, was there something for you um it's hard because uh, we had thought about this for a long time, um, and then we we formulated a plan. And this was like months before, um, and uh, Eve, she did the first recording. It didn't really work out, um, and then we just kind of tucked it away kind of ignored it and then sometime later um i really wish i could remember what it was but i know that she she came in to my office really upset about um just more of what the church does to control people um and she told me we had to do it again um and that's that this fire carried her throughout the whole experience um she because the first time she was nervous, like she said, she um, we had to rehearse several times for her to feel confident enough to do this in front of people who would go nuts if they saw if they realized what she was doing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the second time um, she did it, she was very confident. She did like there, there was she did everything the, the first time perfectly seamlessly. Um, so. I guess to answer your question, um, we can't point to one specific moment where we're like, we have to do this, but uh, it's just been building up for a long time. 
I think for me it was I was just digging more into like I was watching a bunch of cult documentaries and then I was reading more about church history and then it was just like making me more and more angry the more I learned about how all these generations of people have been mistreated and they didn't even know that they were being taken advantage of and it just really fired me up and I wanted to do something to give back at the people at the organization who's been getting more powerful and doing more harm. So, yeah. Can I say, I really appreciate you being candid about that because I feel like there's, there's a part of the ex Mormon experience for those that inhabit that space where they feel like they can't say that they were just mad because then they feel like they're feeding into the angry ex Mormon stereotype. And so they have to come up with some sort of more benign reason why they did something. But I really appreciate you being honest and just saying, no, it's because I was mad because it pissed yeah. me off and I wanted to get back at them. Yeah. And that's, oh. that's just as valid a reason as any other. So thanks for that. Thanks for sharing mm -hmm. that. No, it is. And Nemo, I think, I don't think it's bad sometimes to feed into the stereotype because there's a reason it's a stereotype. Because yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just jealous experience. that they can because I'm an emotionally unavailable British man. And, and so you know, I'm glad that they can express the emotions that I can't. Well, royalty aren't, aren't supposed to express their emotions. Because it ends up, ends up all over the front pages. You're the worst. Right, um, okay. Okay. So I guess the, the final one before we, we go into... Uh... Well, I'd, I'd just like to say, like, I mean, it's, it's not her fire alone. I, I found, like, when I found out that um, the temple ceremony used to include um, uh, disemboweling yourself and slitting your throat if you were to break these covenants, I was heartbroken that my parents, my aunts, and my uncles, and everyone I knew in my community growing up promised these things. It's just wicked that some group of men can ask honest church going people to do that and it it really hurts still mm -hmm. and not warn them that that's what they're walking into yeah yeah and i just think that the the whole situation that people don't see kind of unless you're in it and i think maybe people looking outside into mormonism think how can you not see the faults and the flaws but they're in it if you know what I mean, they can't see the wood for the trees. But I think sometimes it's it's like that when you come out as well, you just walk into a different forest and you're just trying to find your way through um, some anger because it. when you look back at the time that we all sunk into it, um, even the young prince here has sunk time and effort and energy into the organization that eventually we kind of all figure out is lying to us um especially by their standard when they talk about you know lying by omission and different things like that you know the gospel mm -hmm. principles book does not bode well for them um but yeah that that anger i think my wife sister pd is just coming kind of to the end of the anger stage um to more accepting um, that we can't destroy the church, but we can sure as hell be a thorn in its side, especially here in the, the British Isles. Um, but yeah, you you are a colossal thorn because this this film video that you've made will never go away now. As much as intellectual reserve will employ someone to constantly um, go through my Google drives, like literally I've had four emails this week from Google deleting videos, your video from my Google drives. I've opened new oh. Google drives to, mm -hmm. to save it, to share the links with people. Intellectual reserve are watching this now going through my other Google drives, I'm sure. Um, wow. and, and reporting me. Um, but yeah, I, in fact, I re-uploaded it to share with someone earlier today and Google pinged it straight away and said, this, you can't upload this to your Google google drive because it's not, no, not yours yep so um but yeah i put it everywhere and an intellectual reserve must just have a picture of me up on the <laughs> dartboard <laughs> <laughs> which which account are we going to shut down next um it's like yeah. whack-a-mole 
it's gonna they're gonna yeah. be playing whack a mole with this for a long time. Good. And and Good. I've still got people emailing me asking for original copies, which I I will neither confirm nor deny um, whether or not I'm distributing privately because I <laughs> might be, I might not be. Um, <laughs> But um, Intellectual Reserve, by the way, Nemo, do you know who they are? Oh, you know yeah. They're, they're, so Intellectual Reserve, you go to, say, something like this, which is like a little pocket hymn book, and you open it up. That's copyright of Intellectual Reserve, Inc., all rights reserved. Uh, it's the church's intellectual property arm, so it's where they keep all their trademarks. It's where they keep all their, yeah, all their intellectual property, essentially. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what and they do. And the, the way that they get these things taken down is through what's called the DMCA report, Digital Media and Copyright Act. Mm -hmm. um, and they send that off to YouTube or whoever it may be. So they've done me on Google, YouTube, TikTok. Um, and most of these big media or big social media companies won't even argue with it. They will just shut it down and then they will leave it up to um, us as the little person to fight for it and i'm assuming that's what happened uh with your channel uh that you put up which was called or is called adam and eve don't believe mm -hmm. uh, so is that channel still live the channel's still on yeah as far as we can tell okay and are you planning to i guess re-upload or appeal through youtube against intellectual reserve um i don't know because you can make an argument of public interest um i remember when the church tried to get me to take down a video that i put up where i didn't edit their intellectual property so it wasn't a fair use case there's still an argument to be made that what you're publishing is in the public interest um whether you have the desire or means to take on the church in fighting that cause is a completely different matter but um you know, in theory, publishing something like the endowment ceremony is in the public interest, it could be argued. I think that the, the covenant to give all of yourself to the, the church, especially for any kind of politician, um, that then puts the church in front of their constituents and in mm. front of the nation mm. is in the public interest. You know, people like Romney um, and those, uh, those a big interest um, around the, was it the presidential campaign? Yeah, 2012. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, because that was the exact question. Have you taken um, kind of death oaths that you will put the church before? Mm -hmm. Well, that was the concern. And then he put it to John Sweeney and John, uh, so John Sweeney put it to Jeffrey R. Holland and Jeffrey R. Holland tried to weasel his way out of it and couldn't. So he ended up lying on national and international television about mm -hmm. the temple. So, what were you hoping to achieve in filming the session? What was your ideal, I guess, end of this whole thing? Um, well, for one, so that everybody can see what's going on. It's, it's in the public interest to know what changes have been made, what promises are still being made. And really for someone to be able to watch this without um, being pressured by other people to just go with it. And then, I mean, we've, we've, we've talked about how we feel. Um, I think the big thing is I love my community. I love my parents. I love my family. They're all Mormon. They're, they all are very devout, good, honest, hardworking people. They would never ever in a million years think to deceive the SEC by opening up shell companies. They would never ever think to change covenants um, to make it sound nicer. Like they, they would always do what God wants them to do. Uh, it just hurts me so much. And, and I, for me, as, as I was leaving, I wanted to prove to myself that, um, that this isn't real the 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 church isn't real like it's just such a uh challenging thing to come to terms with that when you're born to the church um this whole existence that they describe to you and everything it's not real um 
And then, so I said to myself, we should prove that we can enter the temple with this intent. Um, we can prove that God um, actually is okay with this, that, that God knows what we're doing, or at least that he's not going to stop us at the door. Um, and lastly, for people that are exiting or will exit, or just people that know about this, that um, you know, I don't really know how to describe this better than with using a, a, a movie quote. Um, if you've ever seen the movie 300, um, there is uh, the main character is fighting a battle um, with his soldiers, the 300 guys, against this massive horde. And there is um, a god king that um, almost defeat. well, I guess they, they do defeat them eventually. I'm probably virtuing this. Maybe you guys should uh, pull a 300 and play it whenever you can. But uh... The world will know that free men stood against a tyrant that few stood against many. And before this battle was over, that even a god king can bleed. I, I feel like that's that's one of the main reasons why we did this is because we wanted to prove that the Mormon the, the Mormon God or the the Mormon church as it's, as they describe themselves is not true. And that even that church can bleed. And so there was no, there was no discernment. The guy on the recommend desk didn't go, oh, hang on, these guys are here to do this. Spirit told me, so we're going to stop them. You just exactly. walked right on in. Exactly. You did an excellent job. I mean, she didn't have to do anything. The first time she was nervous and not noticed anything different. Yeah. I mean, Nemo, you've been a temple worker. I've been a temple worker. I know what it's like. Um, people are there because... They think this is what God wants. People, I mean, for the most part, people are there because they feel happy inside. They, um, they just want to do good, be honest people, help others. That's it. End of story. Yeah, I don't, I don't think people would even think to look for a camera. Wouldn't cross the mind of no, most temple all. workers. I mean, you'd you'd have to. You'd have to have in your temple working your temple worker meetings, like at the beginning of the day in your in your shift meeting. You'd almost have to have a first presidency reminder on the video that they play to remind you to look for cameras on people. Um, and it'd be a sad state of affairs if they got to that point of paranoia where they're like, now remember to check for recording devices. Yeah. And you've got temple workers spot searching people and stuff like that, you know, which I could well, see I, it getting to. I was looking, you can get the little kind of pen sized bug things that, that scan for electrical devices and stuff. Um, so that brings us, I guess, to, you know, what camera did you use? Um, we'll let you guess. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll never forget. I'll never forget the the time I was working behind the veil and um, it was around Christmas time and all the missionaries came to the temple as, as they do around that time of year. And I remember the mission president's wife. I received the mission president's wife through the veil and this hand comes through. And on it is an Apple Watch. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, she probably shouldn't have that on. But it's, just, it's the mission president's wife. I'm sure it's fine. Thinking back on it now, you're like, actually, she could have she could have taken audio of the entire thing on her Apple Watch and no one would have known. Voice memo. Voice memo, just running yeah. for an hour and a half or whatever. So, But how you get a camera, I'd, ah, I love the idea that like you sewed a button onto something. <laughs> or that like 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 the button on your envelope for your temple robes was like a little camera and so you were just holding your robe bag like this the whole time um i love the idea yeah or like i don't know or like glasses but maybe not i think it was glasses an earring I, I think... an earring right no, an earring that just, you just sits there cheek cheek in the way <laughs> you know it depends, no, it depends was, on your facial structure, I suppose. In, well, I've got chubby cheeks, but right. um, no, I think in the frame, because you can get them, the frame of the glasses where it's just a tiny, and I've seen someone, they've got some, that have got like diamantes on them, um, like black jewels on black glasses. But then when the camera's, when the camera's in amongst all the jewels, who's going to look? You know what I mean? Oh, can I check her jewels? 
<laughs> I mean, with Nemo, with Nemo, it'd be crown jewels because that's what a prince would have. But um, yeah, so it, and at one point in the video, I'm sure you looked down um, during some of the clothing, or you know, I'd love it to be. I genuinely, I'd love it to be like a septum piercing. <laughs> so like you're 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 like that woman in the temple. No one's gonna mess with you because you're like <laughs> you got your septum piercing. And there's a little camera in it. <laughs> no. I'm just trying to think like did you when did you put the camera on so we know the video starts at the beginning of the endowment session but we're assuming because there's some some blurred faces you put some effort into editing the video um and editing the identity of others which is very nice of you to do um but how much did you cut off the beginning did you put it on like as you were getting ready in the changing room uh, as part of your clothing or what if it was glasses you could wear it from like getting out the car and walking through the recommend desk yeah yeah that's true uh well yeah we we, we trimmed it okay well, you would imagine right because you'd have to trim it until you you wouldn't want to do anything to arouse suspicion so you'd like you'd wait till you got out of the temple so i'm sure there's some some great like footage of Kind of going through, uh, you know. I, I gotta say, uh, I, I really like that they have uh, mirrors in the celestial room. <laughs> um, so, like, you know, you could, you, if you had a camera, you could take a picture of yourselves. <laughs> Your new profile picture. <laughs> like the best <laughs> profile picture no. ever. Just you in the celestial room, and everyone will be like, how has he taken that? I can't even see the camera. But it's like Lin Lindsay Hanson Park put a picture up um, of her, like, stood in what appeared to be the ordinance room of the Salt Lake Temple. And I was like, How'd you get that picture? How'd you get that picture? And she's like, It's the set of Under the Banner of Heaven. <laughs> so you guys would be able to outdo Lindsay because you'd be like, Well, it's the real deal. Wow. <laughs> People have been asking for a sequel. Um, already on social media, I put a, a, a thing out there. What would you want to ask these people, um, or the people who'd who'd filmed the ceremony? And people are asking for like, are we going to get a, a sealing ceremony? So either you yourselves going to do sealings for the dead, or going to a, a live sealing of a friend. I don't know. You Can know, I make a it... request? Go on. <laughs> Can I make a request because I, I I would love to be able to make this happen myself, right? You know how there's these um, there's this thing on YouTube where you live stream and you're like, I do such and such until such and such happens. So there's a guy who's like, I played piano in a shopping center until someone asked me to stop. Um, I would <laughs> love for you guys with any sort of live streaming capability you may or may not have to live stream yourself sat in the celestial room and just call it, I sat in the celestial room until a temple worker asks me to leave. <laughs> and you just you just sit in there and occasionally like move seats and just try and look deep in thought and meditation and prayer and just until one of them comes and asks you to leave. That would be the most productive thing anyone has ever done in the celestial room. <laughs> that I would watch the hell out of that. <laughs> because like there's there's some genuine fear. Everyone's like, oh, are they gonna get kicked out? Are they gonna get kicked out? <laughs> so <laughs> it, do with it what you will, but okay. Okay, go we have noted that. Thank you. Yeah. No, and Much if you like do, my opposing votes, it has been noted. Yeah. <laughs> if if you do, let's have another sit down, and we will. Yeah, we'll we'll go through it, like live stream it. Or if you want help live streaming it, yeah. we will Reach help out. you live. We can help. It. We will take that. Whatever equipment is required. So, um, what we'd also like to do is try and help you. Um, pay for the camera now i'm not trying to figure out how much it is but we want to put a call out to anyone who's watching um we want to try and show our appreciation so fifty dollars a hundred dollars um how much are you out of pocket because you've done such a great thing that i think you should get that back um uh, this when we find out like it's it, they've spent a thousand dollars on some like <laughs> high tech spy nonsense Hey, if it's thousand dollars, it's thousand dollars. You know, we'll try and get as much as as we can. But yeah. it'd Sorry, be amazing. Yeah. Um. No, I don't think. 
We don't want any money. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think sorry, I think the coolest thing people can do to show their appreciation is to just spread it more and talk about it more and just be a bigger thorn. Like like memes, I, I I'm 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 kind of hurt that there aren't that many memes taken from this. I mean, honestly, you guys all say it's a slideshow, but when you get to the very last sign of the priesthood, it is now um, a gif. It like there, there is there is a scene where there's movement. I'm not talking about like that you know the creation story at the very end when the when the arms go down. It's it's jarring. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. you could get it on tenor gifts so that like when you're on whatsapp and messaging someone like you're like oh what are you up to and then you can just send them like the <laughs> you know uh you, you just send them the fourth to the, the second token of because it freezes tenor gif is that a gift that has trouble holding its bladder no <laughs> <laughs> no tenor sorry. gif um i can't even I, I a don't... musical joke sorry um no, I saw one today. So as I was going through it and uh, with general conference in mind, let me open this one up that I took a screenshot of to make a meme of, um, and I will share it on the screen because I think it deserves it. Um, here we go, window, this, this one. So there's the primary hymn of follow the prophet, right? And uh, Oh, no, it's not on the screen yet. Here we go. So follow the prophet, he knows the way. So Adam was a prophet, first one that we know. So Adam was a prophet, but in general conference this weekend, Elder, whatever his face is, Haney. Said, said that we don't follow dead prophets. And I'm, I'm, I've got to put on it, um, Adam and his reaction when Elder Haney said that the words of dead prophets are worthless. Because <laughs> he's got to look on his face. I, I, I wonder why they picked this couple. Sorry, go on. Oh, that would be perfect. That, that would be the perfect use of this image. I mean, that's a great image. Particularly, you could take that image and like shift perspective on it slightly, flatten it out slightly, and it would just be it'd be excellent for so yeah. many reaction memes. Yeah. Well, that that <laughs> might even be like the uh, the thumbnail with some big question marks over. Well, the that there that there is like um, <laughs> when he said he'd eat the fruit, but then blames it on you to God. It's like. What are you talking about? <laughs> the woman thou gavest me is like, what? What are you talking about? What a snitch! Yeah, right. <laughs> like, yeah. I always, I always thought, is it strange that basically the moment goes, God goes right. So what happened? He's like, she did it. <laughs> Her fault. <laughs> oh, and and he knows now that what he wants is for her to put out, and he's blaming her first. You know. Honestly. As Adam, it makes the most sense. I mean, and she has to obey my will, too. So, or what is it? Covenant to obey your husband. Me, as he hearkens to the counsel of the father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, which is no longer the wording that they use. Well, for people that go through now, but yeah. you still have to have to me. I do. I did promise that. So, yeah. And the <laughs> the question that I have asked um, a former temple president is. Um, what what is the case with covenants that have changed? Because they say they've not changed, but if, for instance, so that's the exact one that I asked. My wife covenanted to hearken unto me as I hearkened or followed the Lord. But now that doesn't happen. So in the case that Sister PD is stood next to uh, a sister who is married yesterday and has taken out different or has, has taken out the newer um, covenant and they both carry out the same act of rebellion against their husband, um, who's in trouble? Is Sister PD in trouble because she's made one covenant? Is the other sister not in trouble? Um, or even as far as going to the, the death oaths, have we made the same covenant as people pre-1990 mm -hmm. to take the same actions were we to uh, reveal the the covenants and the signs and tokens of the priesthood. Jonathan Streeter makes a pretty strong argument that you have in terms of the penalties. He makes a pretty strong argument that they still apply. They're well, still if, implicit. 
because the the we won't do the signs now but those signs that are you know what it's a bit like the whole slideshow movie thing mm -hmm. because the slideshows are stills of the movie to represent what's happened in the movie and the signs are stills it's the last part of the movement mm -hmm. of the penalty yeah yeah so it remains in place you're just missing the movement so mm -hmm. i guess without knowing we are making that that covenant mm. yeah so sorry you were saying you asked the temple president what did they say they said it's the same right so they said yeah uh, it's it's all the same basically going back so no matter what you do in the temple right. um it's all the same so basically i think you could just go in bow your head five times say yes and we're done like think how <laughs> think how many of your ancestors you could get through in a day if it was like yes 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 they should do they should do sessions for for new attendees like new patrons and then just sessions for for the dead and i wonder whether that's where they'll go like oh right when you go through for yourself you get this special experience they'll maybe crack out popcorn or something you know like really make it a treat and then mm -hmm. um for all the others it's just you go in you do your hail marys and you leave mate yeah. i i was thinking of asking people when they watch the video online to tag a friend and then it counts that that friend's now been endowed um <laughs> and like it's it's up to like thirteen thousand views so thirteen thousand friends could now be secretly mormon the church would love us amazing you know get that one like baseball baptisms forget that <laughs> we've got we've got facebook endowments <laughs> 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 nice okay so you knew that changes have been made to the session before you went um and obviously we know now that this was the second time around um i've got a list of changes here but for for time's sake if we cherry pick some of those changes what are the ones for you that kind of stood out i think well this one's been a change for a while but it still bothers me that they took out because cause having to veil my face really bothered me. And then I would ask people what that meant and they would come up with some random reason about how it makes me more holy or whatever. They would just make up something and I would have to be okay with it. But then they suddenly take it away and it's like, well, I didn't have to struggle trying to figure it out this whole time. They could have just taken it away sooner. So that bothers me. And then I don't have to covenant to obey my husband anymore, which bothered me when we got married. Yeah. <laughs> no more control. <laughs> so yeah, it just yeah, those two are my biggest ones. Okay. Adam. Um I mean I really fixated on the procedural changes, but they changed that in twenty nineteen where the robes used to have to go on the right side as well. Um, we used to have to tie um, the hat back to the robes. Um, well, I was I was one of those who was looking for symbolism everywhere I could and trying to understand it. Turns out it was all just a farce. Did you ever do the um, the what I call the robe shift shuffle, um, where because <laughs> because so I went through so many sessions as a worker. What you do is you just you turn the cap around as you take the robes off and then throw them onto the other shoulder and then back on so yeah. that essentially you don't have to untie and retie the hat. That's exactly what I used to do. Yeah. So I'd, like, I'd love to, you know those life hack videos you get online? I'd love to do a series of those, <laughs> but for temple attendants. Five, it's like, five you've minute. been doing this wrong your whole life. And it's like, you could actually do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I never had any. I never had any good influences like Nemo to tell me, "Hey, just leave it all tied." Leave it all tied, yeah. man. Leave it tied. Just switch it around. Well, there were a couple of bits that I thought were kind of a bit weird, and one of them, right at the beginning, was uh, I guess it goes back to the symbolism you were just talking about, Adam, um, and it was the music. Is a gift from your heavenly Father. It is a symbolic representation of the plan of salvation. Oh, is this near the end? No, that's right at the beginning. Okay. They don't... They never used to say it was, like, symbolic, which would have helped so much, like, me trying to figure out how Satan is talking to them, but then talking to me. And 
Does that musical motif return throughout the the video? Yeah, they they played at the end, um, right like right after they explained the the veil ceremony with that uh, new guy, um, and the music just it kind of reminds me of like. Um, I don't know if you were to like go to some sales convention and these were like the people that were successful, the most successful at their sales, and they get the music played and they go up and get the award. Whilst they um, shout their names. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's to evoke that emotion, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's for emotional uplift. Yeah, it's it's the heart cell. Mm. Um, yeah. So another another person that gets, I guess, a lot into the new endowment oh. ceremony Goodness. is Jesus. Yeah, as Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's the first time Jesus has actually ever been in the endowment ceremony. Um, it took a long time to get his recommend, but he's finally there. <laughs> uh, there's still hope for me then. <laughs> yes. There's. The endowment is given by revelation. It is best understood by revelation, prayerfully sought with a sincere heart. <laughs> You know what that means? To Tra me? Translation, yeah. Go on. Ev everyone can have a different idea about what it is because everyone yeah. receives a different revelation all the time. Yeah. It's like you're confused. Fine, M justify it to yourself and then come back to us. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. But Jesus comes up every time um, that there is yeah, a lot, a, a mention of Jesus. Um, this is good. Yeah. Did Did you guys find? the whole jesus thing jarring or that there was so much now i mean for me it made perfect sense but not in the way that the church wants me to think about it um you can see that russell and nelson has made a lot of changes lately to move away from the word mormon to move towards a more jesus christ centric church um and to remove some of kind of the weird elements and in, in this in this film they put together it's like well um, th really, this was, this was based on Freemasonry. This had, a, like, it was a completely different experience back in, like, 1857 or something. Um, so there was, there was really no room to talk about, like, the Savior and his atonement. It was really more about doing these rituals and proving that you were loyal to the church. And so now Russell and Nelson is trying to weave in more Jesus Christ because it really, it, like, that's the only thing about the church, in my opinion, that really works is that they that there is an element of Jesus Christ and not being a hypocrite and uh, being honest and being charitable. I mean, not being a hypocrite as applied to the members, I guess the leaders, that's exempt. But um, that part works for the church, and I think that's why they put it in. I feel like it was such a low effort or low, yeah, like a low effort attempt because they just threw up some pictures of Christ that someone painted. I hope they got credit. And then, and then they were like, okay, cool. We checked the box of including Jesus. Now let's go back to the Freemasonry. To, to yeah. be honest, this slideshow that I've put together probably took more effort than it was <laughs> to get those images off of whatever gospel library that they've got. Um, because I'm sure some of those images are quite familiar as well. Mm. Um, so... Well, what's really interesting if you throw that slide back up for a sec, go back. Because I have a feeling that picture of, yeah, okay, that new painting of John the Baptist. This one seems familiar, and the the bottom. Mm. That one's corner. definitely like that's that's old school Mormon Jesus right there. I've possibly seen this one before that, in the yeah. top right. -hand the one corner. below looks like it's been painted from a screenshot of the church video of john the baptist and what's really interesting about that is that the guy who played john the baptist is exmo now <laughs> that's awesome so the guy that british guy that played john the baptist in um in the that church video that everyone knows is and the church still uses he's exmo he's out to be honest the one below um this john the baptist one jesus looks like he's really cold and has just peed in the water and he's kind of going oh finally because he's got a really weird look in his face um i wish we could zoom in right now i'll I'll show a zoom in um in the the edit but yeah he's, he's just got a weird expression on his face and i'm like 
maybe he knew he was going to be portrayed this way and he's like what are you doing to me um but yeah something else that people have commented on quite a bit online um, and i don't know if there's any other game of thrones fans um in the audience or if adam and eve might be um but what was commented on was a really sexy portrayal um of lucifer <sighs> Um, and his likeness to Jamie Lannister. Um, I, I I've not seen Game of Thrones. I can't comment. Mention in the comments. I'll put up a picture of Jamie Lannister, and you can all tell me. Sister PD will tell me that it does. It's nothing like him. I'll be walking down the street, and I'll say, "Oh, that looks like your friend." In fact, I mistook my very English um, nephew the other day from a distance of you know some meters. Um, and I said to my brother, who's his dad, I was like, oh, look, he's there in that shop. And then the guy turned, like, looked up and turned around a little bit. And it was a very Chinese gentleman. Um, <laughs> so that's that's how my facial recognition works. Um, <laughs> so what was the, the selection of film here is really interesting that they went with. Um, uh, they went with the C film. This is C film. So uh, back in the day, you had you had a film, which was the uh, Michael Ballam, overly dramatic Satan. You had B film, which had the quite short Satan. Um, it was B for boots. He was the short <sighs> Satan who had a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Uh, C film was chummy Satan. And that's this one that they've chosen to take the stills from. And then D film. Um, and I didn't make this system up, by the way, just before I get cancelled. D film was D for Dizzy because um, the Eve in that film was a uh, bit ditzy, uh, according to the other temple workers. That's that's what I was taught by the temple workers is the way of remembering the films, and it's stuck. Yeah, these are the names of the films? The films were named A, B, C, and D, yeah, when they were shown oh, okay. before 2019 when they changed to still slides. Um, and so what they've done is they've picked C film, uh, the Adam and Eve in that are a real life acting couple who are married. Um, they've been in some uh, non Mormon projects as well. I heard she um, was in a girl band. I, was I couldn't say. Trying but... to Google earlier, someone said online she was in like a, a girl band. So... But yeah, but sorry, that's just a random bit of Temple trivia. Yeah, that was C film that they've they've chosen to take stills from. Well, speaking of Nemo, it's almost like uh, um, we're we're on a wavelength, um, but. You can tell us, or you're film. just very good at segueing from my <laughs> random asides to what you want to talk about. We've been doing this for a while. So uh, one of the parts that really scared me about the ceremony was that rant from Satan when he's cast out by Peter, James, and John. And it really, when I when I watched it in uh, your video, Adam and Eve, it, it really didn't do it for me. So I thought I need to look back at some of these other films to see the difference and how it made me feel. And there's this uh, clip taken from Noonane Mo's YouTube. Um, you know, if you do want to see more Temple videos other than this one from Adam and Eve, which is, as Nemo said, the best quality. You can see here, this one's a little bit on the, on the cock, but this is when Peter, James and John come to the terrestrial world. Nemo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, Adam, and even they the find Satan weary, there. The lone and weary world. Yeah. Um, so this was the scary bit. Uh, mm. if anyone wants to watch from behind a pillow, in in the old movie, with the bald Satan. Which one had the bald Satan? Nemo. D film. D film. This is D yeah. film. Um, so, yeah, the scariest bit. I am Peter. I'm James. I am John. Yes. I thought I knew you. What are you going to do now? We will dismiss you without further argument. Ah, it's Joseph Smith. You have looked over my kingdom and my greatness and glory. Now you want to take possession of the whole of it. I have a word to say concerning these people. This is the bit. Breaks the fourth wall. Do not walk up to every comment they make at these altars in this temple this day. They will be in my power. 
Sigma. We command you to depart. By what authority? Boom. In the name of That's Jesus it. Christ. That's the one. He's like, uh, um, all right. Yeah, uh, I guess paper does beat rock. Off, off what, I go. What's the film where he snaps the stick off? Because that was always the one that got me. He snaps the stick off. That, that's got to be a film. That's not yeah. any of the new ones. Because in this one, he just shuffles off between a couple of rocks. Yeah. Um, but the same scene now. So this is just, I guess, an example of how naff the... the um, how naff the new slideshow is so not the whole scene just 30 seconds of it i have a word to say concerning these people if they do not keep every covenant they make in this temple today they will be in my power satan we command you to depart it's like an angry comic book By what authority? <laughs> He's waving goodbye. That's that arm is not at ninety degrees enough no. for my comfort. Look, he's, he's looking. He's like he's waved at me. I've got to go. <laughs> Doodly. <laughs> <laughs> Tara. But it, like, like, there's no the music's like, there and the gravitas. script's there, but yeah. So I think Satan, however beautiful he is, he's just not as scary. So. <laughs> quite threatening when it was an actual moving film. Sorry, Adam. Can I ask you guys a question? And Eve. Oh. Um, so that that part, like, I didn't really know what to make of it, even, even my first time through. I want to ask you guys, like, did you think that you would be in Satan's power the first time you went through? Like, or was it just, like, a rhetorical literary device? Like, what would you guys think of that the first time through? I felt scared. I was like... I, I really got to step it up. Really? Yeah. I had I had two thoughts. I took it literally. I was like, right, okay, so if I don't, then I will be in Satan's power. And two, why is the only person who talks to me directly Satan? <laughs> no, he's not. Adam does. Satan's the only one that breaks the fourth wall like that. No, Adam at the end of the movie turns to oh, the yeah. camera oh, he and does, says, yeah. Yeah, yeah. follow these people as in follow the apostles mm. doesn't eve say so i think eve says that line some one that's how long it's been since they let me in yeah i think she agrees oh. maybe i don't know okay uh, but yeah i was genuinely scared that was why i chose that that part because i would sit there rehearsing all of my sins from the past however long since it's almost like mm. confessional isn't it um but i not out loud please don't think i was sat there in the room being like oh i thought this or did that um but yeah it scared me i think i think this part is um i was reading about how in salt lake when they had the endowment house um when someone would go through for the first time it was all it was all you know acted out by i guess members of the ward or something and one of the parts would be like like you would be in their power if you were found to be evil and they would lay you on a on a, on a bed and put a knife to your throat and say these words um really fascinating and incidentally no one was found to be evil everybody made it out but it was like kind of a warning but with a knife to your throat i was gonna say so recently i was in a masonic hall having a private tour through the temple room etc and the person was explaining a lot of things to me um and yeah they've got the sword there they've got a, a, a dagger there and different things so for them it's still very literal these kind of you know um knives to throats and things like that so you can imagine especially when it was very new that those things were carried over and that sort of literal you know we are going to find you and uh, yeah. yeah, it's very Liam Neeson, isn't it? Taken. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think it had a massive impact on me. The fact that, you know, I, I felt as though he was the only one that, like, spoke directly to me, I think, is a testament to just how full on it was, you know? Yeah. That you've got, you've got, because the, the, the thing is, as well, he is Satan. You're putting a face to the boogeyman you've been taught about your entire life. 
you know, this invisible harbinger of all the bad things, of all the reasons that you fail and you're not good enough. He's the reason for all that. And all of a sudden he's got a face and a voice. Um, and, you know, he it's very difficult for him as an actor to live up to the level of fear you've been taught to ascribe to Satan throughout your life. But um, saying that to you, directly addressing you like that has a big impact. Yeah. And to people who maybe who are emotionally vulnerable, it's. Could you imagine if if someone said to you, you know, that sort of thing every day, um, and you took that very seriously, it would be almost like psych psychological abuse. Um, well, and it's also like if you don't live up to every covenant that you make in this temple this day, you will be in my power. And it's like, well, I've only made, you know, maybe one or two at this point in the ceremony. I haven't I haven't made all of them yet. So like mm -hmm. I'm I'm now scared that I'm not gonna be able to live up to covenants that I don't yet know what they're going to be. He needs to say it at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and then offer you the chance to withdraw. <coughs> yes. Right? Yes. Well the church was oh. They do. And as if by <laughs> magic. Ta -da. Today you will be invited to covenant to keep five laws. The law of obedience. The law of sacrifice. The law of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The law of chastity. And the law of consecration. So they do give uh, some warning. They don't tell you how now. you... It is. But they don't tell you how you're going to make those covenants. They or just under say... what threat of penalty. Yeah, because your first covenant, baptism, that's quite joyous occasion. You know, people, everyone hugging you and, and everyone congratulating you and different things. Whereas you go into the temple and you make what are the most important covenants, according to um, the LDS church, and you just get threats of the pinnacle death. of your religious experience. <laughs> it's just a death threat. Yeah. Yes. Um, so couple of other changes one oh no so eve i think i've caught you out <gasps> i think i've got you and i've just remembered that i i got this part of the film um so nemo i think you're right it's definitely a septum ring um, <laughs> watch, watch this to be sure really loud sneeze Please consider yourselves as if you were respectively adam and eve adam Eve, we will now put you under covenant. They look so happy the about it. Obedience, which is to obey <laughs> <the> <laughs> commandments. Brothers and sisters, as invited by Elohim. He's not told you a lot about what the law of obedience is. No, not at all. Wait for it. Okay. Each of you bring your right arm to the square. Okay, no. Each of you saw I actually found myself doing it whilst watching. Angels. I just do it right now. I don't know why. Yeah. It's the next bit that you, you do that gives it away the septum ring. Each of you bow your head. Bow your head. Yes. Camera? Yes. Bow. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. I told you, Nemo. <laughs> I love the idea now that actually what you did was you're like, oh, no one will notice. And actually, you went in with a GoPro, like, <laughs> just strapped to your head. Okay, no, who will question it? The veil, when you flip it up, can stand up quite high. Yeah. So if you got like a see-through veil, quite quite sheer, you know. You could have, you yeah, everyone, everyone thinks you've got like you've gone back to the '90s and you've got a perm, but actually, it's like you're hiding your GoPro. Yes. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> what, what what's that funny red light on your head? Yeah, like, oh, it's just my pacemaker. It's the spirit. <laughs> it's the spirit. It's the spirit. Yeah. It's it's uh, God's version of Tinkerbell. It's symbols of my powers and priesthoods. Absolutely. <laughs> what it is. Uh, so, so, something that I thought was really weird following COVID was no handshakes anymore. So the whole we desire all to receive it and then you get into actually yeah. receive the token. Um, whereas I mean, now... I'm really glad 
Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go on, go I'm on. I'm really, really glad. Fun. You know, they, they, they went from a communal sacrament cup to individual ones um, around the early 1900s. And now they've decided that we're going to make this sanitary too. And it's great because sometimes when there was a big session on a Saturday, you were invited to be the second. And all that meant was you sat at the back of the room and you gave the signs and tokens to the back half of the people sat there. And so you would just sit through an endowment session as a worker, trying not to fall asleep. Um, and your only job was to stand up and give the, the signs and, and tokens to people uh, at the relevant um, times. So by doing this, they eliminate the need for that, which means that, you know, they eliminate the amount of temple work if they need. Sisters, please consider yourselves as if you were respectively Adam and Eve, receiving this token either for yourself or for... So it is, li it is literally just, please, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, imagine that you are Adam and Eve receiving this token. Not particularly difficult for our guests. No. And, <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. You could do that from home. Home temple, I'm telling you, it's coming. Home temple. <laughs> And that the new question that everyone will have in the future, it won't be do Mormons have more than one wife. It'll be why do Mormons have holes in their shower curtain? <laughs> a white shower curtain that they bring into the room for the day and it'll have the, the special holes in it. Let me show you the holes for anyone that um, hasn't seen them before. They have a special temple towel on the floor to mop up the, or the water that comes through those holes. <laughs> so, so they're gonna, you know, they're gonna take the best bits out of lots of different religions. So you're gonna get into your robes at home. Um, wow. Okay, that's vibrant. Um, and then you're gonna put out your special prayer mat, and it has to face like, it has to face Jackson County, Missouri, um, <laughs> and. You know, then then you've got to wash yourself and be pronounced clean, or that you may become clean from the blood and sins of this generation, and then uh, you will do your temple ceremony in your home. Yeah, I, I genuinely think that's that's going to happen. Um, something I wanted to show people who maybe haven't been to the temple before is how close the other people actually are. This is just a still. Um, from when you were putting on the robes of the priesthood. And this is the person sat next to you. Did you know the person sat next to you? No. Okay, but that's how close they are. So if mm -hmm. the camera was large, you'd have thought they'd notice. So septum ring. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, but yeah, I just, I just thought that was a good, you know, the, and there's other people stood up. Um, everyone... So whilst everyone's concentrating on the screen during the actual ceremony, um, when you stand up to clothe, you're looking around the room, obviously concentrating on yourself, but there's the opportunity, the lights are on. Um, did you ever think anyone kind of clocked you and looked a little closer at your nose? Uh, no, because everyone's so busy putting on their clothes and it's just such a hassle trying to figure out all the stuff that you got to put on. And I, I kind of... Right. I kind of put mine on pretty fast so I can sit down quickly and not be because I didn't want people to look at me for longer than they need to. So I didn't ever feel like anyone noticed. I get your nose ring like constantly. <laughs> so. Well, they'd have been thinking, how is she wearing that? That's not allowed. <laughs> she is repentant. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, the other, I guess, big change is the lack of a witness couple. And the fact that Adam and Eve actually appear in in robes. That's wild. I that's, couldn't believe that. That's something else. Did that take you back when it first came up on the screen? Yeah, that weirded me out. Yeah, I mean, it's this weird computer-generated room. And they were part of the, the film a couple of years ago. And no one knows why. I mean, no Mormon knows why. It got chopped up into a slideshow, and it's just right there. You can see all the holy ordinances, all the holy clothes. I, I mean, I when when I went to the temple, like I think it's film A, I guess, um, where they cast Satan out, and you don't even see the sign by which they cast Satan out on the film. I thought that was sacrilege to put that on the film. And yes. they definitely didn't show any of the tokens and signs on the film. And for the longest time, it was because uh, they were f afraid that if someone stole the film, 
then they still wouldn't have the sacred signs and tokens. Whereas now, someone steals the film and, well, exhibit my, A. My dad used to, <laughs> my dad used to tell me that the film and the audio used to travel separately. So that oh. when they were when they were like flying the reel over over the Atlantic, um, they they'd send the audio separately so that if anyone got a hold of one, they didn't get the other. Maybe back in the forties, but. I'm pretty sure they're on a CD now, or, or even on a little <laughs> USB stick. Well, they're on Facebook yeah. now. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. If you need a backup copy, <laughs> if you lose the original, or just the audio, the audio too. Yeah. Yes. For, for those who want to listen to it as a podcast while they're driving long distance in a lorry. Uh, I I remember a guy from the uh, temple department flying into London, um, being flown out from Salt Lake to London so he could fix some of the audio visual because the curtains weren't opening on cue. So like we had this endowment ceremony where people had sat through like an hour and 45 minutes of an endowment ceremony and then the, the curtains wouldn't open at the end. So they couldn't do the instruction at the veil, so no one could get through to the celestial room. So wow. it was all kind of just stumped. So they got this guy in and sure that if there's a locked room that's constantly got the whirring of fans and that's the A V room for the for the whole temple. So speaking of the curtains and the veil, mm -hmm. uh, behind this sister and this brother are the curtains that mm -hmm. um Nemo is talking about, these ones here, these lovely frilly numbers. Um but so the temple that you were in, did it always just have one room? Because it's the this film that you've done is cut down significantly. So there's you used to have to change the robes from one side to the other. So you used to have to mess with the robes twice, whereas it's just yeah. once now. Um, the officiators, that brother and sister at the front, they were always there to show you um, how to make signs and tokens. They'd be talking not talking, but giving signs and tokens to the witness couple and then to the rest of the room. They would be there to show you the different parts of the veil, whereas now they pretty much do nothing. I guess they're just glorified security guards that press a button when things are done. And, and they're not even that good at it because, you know. But was it always one room in that temple? Because the ones I've been to, you have like kind of two rooms and then the celestial room. Um, I want not I, don't, I, I mean, this was just the one room for the whole endowment. All the ones I've been to have just been the one. Maybe they're just new. What about the Salt Lake Temple? The Salt Lake Temple is the only one that's multiple rooms. So Preston in England is two rooms and then Celestial Room. Uh, is it three? No, it's two. No, it's two. It is two. Yeah, yeah. And then, but London is um, what they call single stage. So it's just one Zip. room with a change of lighting. Yeah, they have four endowment rooms in London. I've been um, to London as well. Yeah. I just don't remember yeah. it. So, I know that Cardston, some of the older temples, because they have all the murals on the wall, you have the, the different rooms to move through. Yeah, you have the garden room. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, et cetera. Creation multiple room. rooms. Yeah, so it was interesting that it was just the, the one room that the veil's right there in front of you and you don't move. Um, so Yeah, quite common. Okay. Um, so the presentation at the veil now is all shown up on the screen. This uh, brother um, here doesn't have to get out his little pen and <laughs> point to all the holes. You're going to put your arm through this and you're going to touch a random person on the other side. When in, when in life would you ever go anywhere and have someone say, uh, you can't see what's on the other side of that? Well, I guess a zoo maybe, you, you, you know, can you guess what creepy crawly this is but otherwise i can only think like of very dodgy places where you might be just sticking your arm through to feel someone's body part <laughs> that sounds so wrong <laughs> it, it is though isn't it and then if you if you go back to pre-1990 and you've got the five points of fellowship where you don't just put your hand on a shoulder you go cheek to cheek foot to foot knee to knee and you know hips and all sorts of things where you have to touch the other person i swear i've had it before where the hand comes through and i'm like i know whose hand that is and i, I don't want to touch it <laughs> 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 
I just used to have old sisters saying, oh, it's lovely to have a young hand coming through the veil. Um, <laughs> of course. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, I guess. Oh, dear. <laughs> Yeah, I, I apparently, but for, according to others, I lacked the gravitas to be the to to be the lord. So to be the lord, <laughs> yeah. They're like, why is this fetus pretending to be the Lord Jesus Christ omnipotent? He's like twelve. I was nineteen <laughs> at the time. <laughs> so something else I thought was really ballsy of you was you got up and went to the prayer circle. So yeah. you you that's yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you went face to face with the officiator. Yeah, I mean, you gotta experience it at the fullest. No half measures. So going to the prayer circle was that part of the first time round and the second time round, or was it part of that sort of second time round burst burst of energy and sort of vigor that you'd got that time? I think we did it both times. It was definitely Adam's idea. I didn't want to push it that far, but he was he was excited to do that. In for a penny, in for a pound, right? <laughs> yep. I mean, no, no discernment um, detected. Oh. Well, yeah, there you go. And um, some people have asked why you silenced the. Um, you didn't silence the prayer circle when the video was talking, but in the um, film that you made, you silenced the actual prayer. Um, was that because there were some identifying things said, um, I guess, from the, the officiator? Oh. So, um, I mean, our take on it is the reality is, is us, us two were the only ones that um, knew this was being recorded. Like everyone else was there, I assume, because they wanted to be closer to God. And I don't want to bring them into this experience. You know, this, this is it's between them and God. So let's leave it that way. Um, the, I mean... I'm, I'm, we're, we're drawing a very, very, very fine line. So there may or may, like, I may or may not have gotten it right. But I think the, the, the word said in that prayer circle, um, and those people there, I don't think they need to be a part of this experience of telling the world what goes on in the temple. So we pulled that out. Uh, for anybody who's wondering what was said in the prayer circle, honestly, from what I can remember, it was very generic, like, um, you know, bless these, like they have the bag of names and they like bless these names so they can have, you know, whatever they need, uh, whatever they're searching for. Um, I, it was like, bless the church, bless the youth of the church, you know, that sort of thing. Because there are rules about who you can and, can and can't pray for in the prayer circle. You know, it says to, it says to pray for the prophet, you can pray for other people generically, but don't pray for other individuals. The only individual you can pray for by name is the prophet. Uh, is the rules of the prayer circle for officiators. Um, so everything else has to remain sort of uh, generic. Um, Always pay, pray for the missionaries. So the, the other thing was we were talking about, um, I guess, silence in the prayer, which I totally agree with. They didn't know. And, you know, that was their personal thing. The rest of it is generic video that's played everywhere that you could you know, get from anywhere. So I totally agree. Was that the same reason that you didn't show actually going to and through the veil? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's harder technically to anonymize everybody. Well, I don't know. We, we want to anonymize um, as much as we can. I really appreciate your thoughtfulness in this because it could be very easy when you go and do something like this to be like, oh, well, just, you know, stuff it. We're just going to, you know, we're not going to bother to blur faces. We're, we're in this now. We're just going to put it all, the whole thing out there. But the fact that you're kind of being thoughtful about it still, because essentially what you have done is you have violated what a lot of people hold sacred by doing this. Like that's how a lot of people will view this. Um, and there's there's a, an element of self control and and kind of honorable. There's something honorable about doing that, but still honoring people's privacy. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, thank you for saying that because we spent a lot a lot of time trying to make sure that um, people you couldn't recognize anybody there. Um, yeah, and I like I really do want to overemphasize that. Um, 
the people in my community, the, the Mormon people in my community, like they love the temple and I don't want to take that away from them. Uh, I know why they're there. They're there to be better people. Yeah. Systems, not people, right? Hard on systems, soft on people. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Um, so I guess following all of this, has has anyone found out? Because I could imagine the fallout would be difficult. So obviously, like we said at the beginning, we don't know who you are. Um, you're just Adam and Eve to us. Um, and we, we don't want to dig into that. But has anyone uh, from your closer circle found out and there's been some fallout. Um, like found out that we're out of the church. Uh, no, that you that that you are Adam and Eve. No, we've been yeah, we've been real careful. To quote Eve, we take to our grave. We, <laughs> yeah. It's our, no, take it seriously. Yeah. It's um, there's there's I'm sure there's groups of like preppers who are out there now trying to figure out where the camera went and like from the hue of the room where which temple you were in and then trying to figure out who the blurred officiators were so they can figure out the day and the time and then they can break into the church's system and look up your recommend of everyone who went in there they will exterminate everyone who went on that day <laughs> but please don't please don't worry about that um, but yeah, no, I would, it's... I would take it with you. I mean, yeah, well, you, you said in a message to me, sorry for being cagey, and you know, don't apologize at all. Yeah, I mean, um, me and Noah, he just, he seems to be a lot more vocal than we are, and I think that's awesome. He should do that. Um, but yeah, we just, we wanted this video to be out, and I think we're just gonna resume to our normal lives. Yeah. No that's fantastic we will continue to try and share the video as much as possible uh, i was even looking at like server space and which countries so hong kong's one like the middle east and stuff if you hire a server there they don't respond to the dmca requests from the united states because they don't like them for some reason so if you get the video onto a server there um then you can share it as much as you want but it's, it's a bit expensive. So if you would like to like this video and subscribe, that would be amazing. If you want to donate and if you want to, if you want to tag that donation as server, um, then do so using the link in the description below. And, and if we get enough, we'll, we'll put it on the server um, and share it globally. Well, it's already out there. But Adam and Eve, is there anything else, I guess, that you want to say um, to people listening? Um, I think I would just like to say, I really appreciate these circles that, um, podcasters like you guys have created where we can talk openly. And like, it was super helpful for me as I was stepping out to have this community of support and not feel like I'm crazy and I need to just go back because how can everyone still be in and be okay with this? Why am I the only one out? So it just made me feel less alone. And I'm hoping that this video will help more people realize some of the craziness and help more people open their eyes, so to speak, because their eyes have not yet been opened. <laughs> so. And they do not yet know the good from the evil. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. No. I would say, um... I really, Nemo, I think you said this actually right before we, we went and did this. I don't know. I'm not sure about the time, but you said like, um, we should, you made a comment about being PIMO, about how, um, and if you remember this, go ahead and say it, but uh, basically we should stay in the church and make and make changes from within. Like you had that, um, you, you created that letter for people to send out in their stakes about the NPC. Um, and I think, I mean, currently we are PIMO and it's for that reason. It's, it's for the reason of we need to um, bring to light what's going on in the church. Uh, bring, bring to light to the members, like Eve said, um, so that they can understand, they can, they can have their eyes opened, but also to bring to light to the world what the church is doing. 
and how manipulative and um, deceitful it is. Yeah, and if everyone leaves, it kind of just disappears. Like, uh, if, yeah, if you just leave and you don't kind of do these sorts of things. But it's not for everyone, and, but I'm really glad that you both realize it's something you could do um because you know i wouldn't ever judge people if they didn't feel like they could do something as scary as this because it is scary and um <laughs> you know doing that sort of thing it's true um yeah we are we it was intimidating I, we're trying to be all pals but uh um i think eve did a really great job being brave she she bared the burden of actually doing this inside the temple yeah um, well, I just want to thank you, uh, Eve, for your comments about the podcasters, because sometimes the most vocal um, voice is the dissenting or negative um, towards people who want to do things. And you may find that when you read comments, you know, from people on the videos and different things. But we really appreciate you. And we know from comments and people we've spoken to that they really appreciate what you have done um some of the comments that i've read um one gentleman who'd left the church was talking to his tbm friends and they were kind of ribbing him about if you want to know what the changes are you'll have to go back to church and he was like well now i don't because i know what they are you know and other people saying that they you know from part member families maybe a spouse who has left the church and one who was never at church and then the one that is never at church has been able to watch it and can now empathize with their partner more effectively as to what they went through and mm -hmm. kind of the programming. Um, so even though that seems like a really, I never would have thought of that scenario, but people out there are finding all sorts of different ways that this video um, is helping them. So I think that's just fantastic that it is having that impact and helping people that you you will probably never know um, the true impact. We only see these these small small parts. So thank you. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. So if you want to send a th thank you to Adam and Eve, don't believe, then you can find them on Reddit and yeah there's there's many threads there on reddit so i'm sure they go through them and that's where they see most of the comments so you can leave a comment there for them for that bravery and i'm sure adam was sat across the room ready um to you know protect eve should someone have spotted the camera and old man the camera. <laughs> take him down uh, there, there were no holds barred and all hips were in danger uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's not just old people at the temple but some people have died in sessions um so thank thank you for being here thank you for being brave enough and trusting me and nemo um with this yeah just a big thank you thank you to everyone for watching please like and subscribe nemo thank you for being here no worries and stay, staying up late with me again sorry for yawning <laughs> yeah it's okay the people's prince needs his sleep <laughs> there's a kind of stick mate it's a bloody pee under my mattress i can't seem to the get prince real. the princess and the pee um but thank you again and we will catch you Pleasure. on the next episode here on priest of dispatches i really love the idea of like going to the special room seeing live streaming yourself mm -hmm. sitting there because cause you've got two elements to that. It's how long did it take for a temple ordinance worker to kick you out, but how long does it take for someone from the Strength and Church Members Committee to see it, I was work out what temple it is, and get <laughs> you removed? No. What, yeah. what, what they could do is that they could um, call each of the temples and say, please send a worker mm -hmm. to take like a sign with the temple name into the celestial room and wave it in front of everyone. Yeah. Well, because because here's the thing as well. You would capture the moment because it would be live streamed. You'd capture the moment they come and confront you about the fact that you're filming, and that would be because you anonymize the person. But you know, you still catch that moment that they've come and confronted you about filming, and you get to you know, essentially record that moment. How do you how do you anonymize live? That's the that's that's the question, that's, isn't it? That's a cream pie to the face quickly. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, how do you how do you do that?
No, I don't, I don't think you can email. I think you just have to record it because let's be honest, if you're in there for like three hours, then you're going to want to put on the a few moments later meme or gif in the, in the middle. Yeah. But yeah. well, no, because there's, there's something about the fact that it's live, that there is something about that. Could, could you imagine if the call went out to all the temples to go and check the septum ring of every sister in the celestial rooms around the world all at once. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing would be if someone came in and, and, and grabbed the camera and looked at it and they were just like a real <laughs> old person who expect cameras to be like this big and they were like, no, it's, it's just a button, Vera. <laughs> it's just a button, Vera. Oh, she just got oh. chilly. She's wearing a shawl. 